We will place some of the worst foods for weight loss in a tier list. These foods are so bad, but also so popular, and you will see how terrible they are for your health and your weight. Now, for each food, we will go through the main components to see where they rank in the tier list. Some popular food will have unexpected results, and some will be straight up terrible for your body. Let me tell you the rules and each food will count as organic and very high quality. We're not gonna consider pollution, we're not gonna consider toxins. And the values I'm about to give you are for 100 grams or 3.5 ounces of the food. Now, let me tell you about feeling full because you need to understand that when it comes to weight loss. One of the most important parameters to feeling full is a food high in amino acids with the most important amino acid being lysine. Then it needs to be high in fiber because it's gonna really feel you full for longer. Then we're gonna consider the volume for 300 calories. So how much of that food can you actually eat every 300 calories? Because obviously the more you can eat, the more it's going to fill up your stomach and the fuller you're going to feel. And finally, we're going to consider what I call the nutri effect. What kind of effect is this food going to have on your body? Because it's very, very important to understand this. Now, as a bonus, we're going to consider calcium and potassium because good levels of calcium and potassium will make you feel fuller for longer. Now, if you like this tier list, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now, how do we feel full? Now, we feel full when the right hormones are present. What are the right hormones that we need to consider in this video here? Now, leptin is the hormone that's gonna make you feel. We wanna make you feel full, not feel, <laughs> feel, feel full. And CCK is the hormone that your body makes when the stomach is full. These two here, when they are both elevated, you're gonna feel full, you're not gonna need to eat anymore. Now, ghrelin is the opposite. Ghrelin is essentially like the Vegeta to Goku to leptin, so it's gonna make you feel hungry, okay? Elevated ghrelin, you're gonna feel like, oh, I really want to eat, where elevated leptin, you're gonna feel full. Now, important one is also insulin, okay? Because insulin is the hormone that lowers your blood sugar so when you eat something with a lot of sugar insulin is going to lower the blood sugar but it's going to bring essentially the sugar inside of your cells but if the blood sugar becomes lower you're going to feel hungry again and that's important to remember now there are more of these which I have discussed in the in the other video on weight loss which you can find in the chart up above now, this is what happens when you're not eating properly, when it comes to too much sugar. As you can see, you eat something with sugar, your insulin, your blood sugar spikes, the insulin brings it all the way down and you feel hungry again. So what you do is imagine like you're eating like a biscuit, like you're gonna feel okay for a while and then boom, down again. And this is the life with a lot of people are experiencing. So let's have a look to what we can do in here. And let me tell you one thing, in our tier list, everything in here today will be terrible. But maybe I can try to give you the least terrible, but it's gonna be really, really hard, I already know. Start with croissant, first one. 400 kilocalories, 21 grams of fat, that's a lot of fat, 46 of carbs, free of fiber, which is not terrible, <laughs> consider what we have today, not terrible, 11 of sugar, which is again, for what we have today, not terrible, and eight of proteins, which is not bad at all, considering like what we're gonna see later. Right, then we have 0.3 of lysine. Remember, the highest amount of lysine is the one that's gonna make you feel fuller. 37 of calcium, Okay, 118 of potassium, not terrible. Volumes call three out of 10, meaning you, you to reach 300 calories, you're not gonna even be able to eat one croissant. So it's not gonna be like incredible for you. Now, where do we put this in the tier list? Now, 400 kilocalories, 21 of fat, 46 of carbs. It's not really great, but we have three of fiber and eight of proteins. It's terrible, but you're gonna see worse today. Okay, 0.3 of lysine, okay. Calcium and potassium, not terrible. You're not gonna eat a lot of it for the, the calories amount, but considering everything, low C tier is probably where it belongs. Now, why is this a disaster? Because the combination of high carbs and high fat are so terrible for weight loss, why? Because essentially, when you eat something with high carbs, you're gonna trigger the release of insulin. Insulin is gonna make absorb everything, and what do you have in here? So you have a lot of fat, right? By having a lot of fat with triggering insulin, what's gonna happen, that fat is gonna go directly into your fat cell. Plus, croissant are some of the foods with the low satiety score, with only 47 out of 100, so it's not really great either. But as you can see, it's gonna be worse. 
Next is soda, and soda is basically pure water with carbs. L look at that, like 10 grams of carbs, 39 of kilocalories, 9 of sugar, 0 of protein, a total disaster here. Now, zero lysine, 2 milligrams of calcium, very bad, 2 milligrams of potassium, really bad. Volume score, though, is really high. Why? Because... To reach 300 calories, you can drink a lot of soda for you to reach that amount. So your stomach will feel full at least for a while, because I will tell you in a moment why this is actually fake. But you can really feel full for like half an hour after drinking a lot of soda. But there's going to be a catch, which I will tell you in a moment. So I will put in soda when that goes directly to FTI. Why? 39 kilocalories. That doesn't seem too bad, but it's basically just sugar and water. And towards the end of the video, I will tell you why. This is terrible. This kind of sugar is also terrible for you. There is no lysine, almost no calcium, almost no potassium, but you can really drink a lot before reaching the calories limit. So you're going to feel full. You're going to release, your body's going to release CCK, which is going to make you feel full at least for a while. But it's FTR for this reason here. Let me tell you why. Why is this an absolute disaster? This is literally liquid sugar. It's very easy to consume. It does have zero fiber. What's going to happen in your body when you eat it? Okay, you're going to have a spike in blood sugar. Insulin is going to bring you down very, very quickly. Within 20 to 30 minutes, you're going to feel hungry again right away. If you combine this with caffeine, it's going to be even worse because the caffeine is also going to speed up your metabolic rate. So you're going to feel that you need to eat even more so certainly this is like f tier right away not even like a question of it right now next one is french fries and i picked a kind of french fries which is not the ter most terrible one you can go really bad with french fries but i pick like an average one one and eight of calories 13 of fat 19 of carbs fiber 1.6 which considering what we are seeing is okay sugar 1.3 protein 1.9 Next, we have lysine 0.4, decent, one of the best ones we have seen so far. Calcium 21, potassium 18, not really great. Volume score 5 out of 10, why? Because with 1 and 8 kilocalories, you can have more than 100 grams, which are going to make you, your stomach feel decent. So uh, where are we putting them? Now, as I said, this is highly variable. I picked decently cooked. You can go into fast food and get 400 kilocalories for french fries, which are going to bring them all the way down to F tier. But on average, this is what you get. 198 kilocalories, 13 of fat, 19 of carbs, not terrible for today. It's terrible in general, not for today. 1.6 of fiber, 2 of protein, 0.4 of lysine. Okay, volume 5 out of 10. I think it belongs to f like low f um, low C tier. Better than croissant? I would say so. Considering the value, yes, yes, better than that. Now, why is this a disaster, though? <laughs> when you have high fats and high carbs, do I need to remind you again? Insulin spikes, uh, not really good for you. But the worst thing is, like, very, very often, like... Um, Potatoes are cooked and, and basically in like polyinsaturated fats, which when they are exposed to heat, like in the case of like like frying, like like high temperature frying, is gonna cause you to make trans, not cause you to make you you're gonna get trans fats, and these are so terrible. Like the worst, there is one thing I'm sure of when it comes to fat in nutrition is like trans fat are terrible for you. They're gonna incorporate themselves into your fat cells, into your cells of the body, all the cells of your body and they're going to make the cells of your body very stiff, which means that all of the nutrients will really, really struggle to get in. So, right, not really great, not really great at all. Now, then we have donuts and 430 kilocalories, 25 of fat, 47 of carbs, of which 18 of sugar, ouch, like two of fiber, though, five of proteins, not too terrible. 0 0.3 of lysine, Calcium 35, potassium 123, not bad. Volume score 3 out of 10 because you can't even eat a donut to reach the 300 kilocalories. So that's a bit complicated in the situation. So where are we going to put this? This is going to go into F tier because the amount of calories are elevated. Now, there are some proteins. There is a little bit of lysine. There is a bit of fiber, but the values, the amount of sugar, the amount of fat is really, really bad. And we can't put it more than... High FTR, are they better than soda for for weight loss? Probably so. Not just for health, but for weight. Probably so, because you're going to eat less of them. But yeah, I mean, total garbage. 
How, why is this a disaster? Do I have to repeat it again? High carbs, high protein. Uh, sorry, yeah, if you wish high protein. High carbs, high fat, not really good. Next, we have bacon, and bacon has 413 kilocalories, 40 grams of fat, of which we have saturated fat, 13, cholesterol, 66. Later, I will tell you more about this. One of carbs, no fiber, and 13 of proteins, which is, I think it's the best one we're going to see today. Lysine 1.1, which is again not bad. Calcium 5, potassium 198, not terrible whatsoever. But volume score 3 out of 10. Why? Because it's 400 kilocalories, so you're not going to eat a lot before you're feeling full. Where are we putting this? So the calories are high, 413, high fat, and there is saturated fat and cholesterol. Are these really risky? It's very hard to tell with fat. Like, I wouldn't really like them too much, especially coming from animal food. So for now, I'm going to say they're not really great for you. Protein 13 and lysine 1.1, probably better than most that we're going to see today. Calcium and potassium, okay, but low volume, so you're not going to eat more. Uh, I don't know, like low seat here, are these better than, than uh, french fries? Probably not, but yeah, guys, we're really like into a disaster. Like this is the hardest video I've ever made on this channel. Now, why is this a disaster though? Like, uh, because we have saturated fats, and I'm not a hundred percent. I'm not ready to say saturated fats are terrible. I believe they are not great. I don't really have all of the evidence, and no one really does. So I would like to reduce them. Okay, are they the, the source of all evil? I'm not sure. But what I'm sure of is nitrates and nitrites, uh, which are added to preserve chef life and has the color in um, a lot of like uh, cured meats, including including bacon. So these ones are terrible. There is a very direct connection to the big C, so the, the bad disease that I'm not going to nominate, so YouTube, I'm not going to demonetize my video. But uh, big C of the colon, very, very clear connection. So no, no, no. So again, for weight loss, they're not really great. For health, uh, they're really, really bad. Next one, we have chips, and chips are terrible. I tell you right now, chips are terrible. Four, 541 kilocalories, 34 of fat, free of saturated fat, 55 of carbs, free of fiber, not terrible, six of proteins. Lysine 0 0.4, which doesn't seem to be terrible. Calcium 21, potassium 464. So it doesn't seem to be terrible, but the volume score is 1.5 out of 10. They are the highest calories that we're going to see today, and therefore they're going to be a disaster from that perspective. So where are we putting them? Highest kilocalories, higher fat, high carbs, lysine is only 0 0.4, I mean, not terrible, potassium is the best one we're going to see today, but there's going to be a lot of sodium, which I'm going to tell you in the next slide, very low volume, man, this is really, really hard, now, this is like F tier, but is it better than soda for weight loss, uh, probably not out of the sheer number of kilocalories, I'm going to put this below soda, but they're both like, they, mm, like I just want to cry when I when I rate this kind of food. I'm not gonna want to do these videos ever again. It's so so difficult. From for me being a nutritionist and being like a helper selling offer, it's so difficult for me to look at these foods here. Now, why is this a disaster, guys? The salt, like the salt in in uh, chips, are going to risk, essentially like are going to raise your blood pressure and raise blood pressure comes with risk of cardiovascular health, uh, like risk of stroke. Uh, I mean, I mean, guys, it is a disaster. It is an absolute disaster. Now, strictly speaking for waiters, I think chips are the worst offenders. Like like cola and chips and like soda and chips is like, oh, no, please don't do that. Okay. Now, next we have orange juice. And orange juice may seem like a good choice. And maybe in some areas it is for weight loss. Not really. Like look at that 42 kilocalories, which is basically like sugar and water with one gram of protein. Yay. 0 0.2 of lysine, not terrible. Now, calcium 11, potassium 200, not terrible. And volume score 7 out of 10. Why? Because you need to drink a lot of it to really reach that 300 kilocalories. So it's going to fill up your stomach. As you can see, it's very similar to soda. Like the difference is not really big. But in a moment, I will tell you why this is a bit better than soda. So what's the big difference between the two? So we have in soda, normally cane sugar plus beet sugar versus fructose in in uh, um, when it comes to orange juice. Why is fructose a little bit better? Now, 
if you're not eating too much garbage, fructose is better because fructose is a sugar that needs to reach your liver and then it's going to be turned into glucose. So there is a metabolic path that needs to be taken. So you're going to spend some of that energy to actually make it into glucose. So strictly speaking, this is going to trigger insulin less. That said, if you eat it in a bad diet with high sugar and, uh, and high calories, Actually, fructose is going to be even worse because it's going to become high triglyceride, which are linked to all sorts of issues. Now, what's the redeeming factor here is vitamin C in, in, the, in the orange. Uh, I'm talking about uh, orange juice without added sugar, by the way. This is like normal orange juice. It's going to be more calcium, more potassium. For, for weight loss, strictly for weight loss, it's not ideal. Is it a much healthier option than soda? Yes, it is. So I guess I'm going to put it into low C tier. Um, I can't put, like, if it just was for health, I would probably put it maybe high C tier, but for weight loss, not a great option. Why is this a disaster? It's, I mean, considering today, it's really not. Uh, there are worse things than orange juice, but just make sure that there is no fiber in orange juice. So that's not great for your for your feeling of fullness and fiber is really good for you. It really supports your body. And if it's pasteurized, like some of the vitamin C is going to be broken down. It's not ideal for feeling full, but compared to some stuff we're going to see and compared to what we're about to see right now, uh, it's not terrible. Cookies, have a look at cookies. 496 kilocalories, 23 of fat, 9 of saturated fat. So they may not seem too terrible, but look at the carbs. 68 of carbs, of which 2 of fiber, yay! But 31 of sugar, oh my gosh. 5 of proteins. Now, why is this terrible? Lysine, 0 0.2, calcium, 45, potassium, 159. It's not terrible, but look at the volume score, 2 out of 10 is almost at the same level of bad of chips. But this is what we need to consider. Second worst calories, 496, high fat, 23, which is already terrible and the worst type of sugar. Now, this is going to be an absolute disaster for your insulin and your gain weight. Fiber 2, protein 5, lysine 0 0.2. These are the redeeming factors and the volume and the calcium and potassium are not really terrible, but that sugar, though, guys, it's so, so bad. So this goes directly into F tier and I will consider with you in a moment which part of, of F tier. Now, from now, I want to show you this thing about insulin. I want to understand you, for you to understand the part about insulin. So what's the situation here? Now, the highest sugar is going to trigger even more insulin release. Why is this a problem? Because insulin, the more you keep releasing it, the more you keep eating sugary food, the more your cells will become insulin resistant, which is like a step to get you towards type 2 diabetes, which is one of the major issues. So you should not trigger sugar consistently, okay? This is the same problem that you're going to get with uh, sodas, as an example, like more than orange juice, they consistently trigger insulin, they consistently trigger it, and you can get insulin resistance, which is really, really, really bad. So where do we go from here? and what is the final verdict of what we're seeing today? Who's going to be the winner? Who's going to be the worst? So between these two here, what's worse? At the end of the day, they're very, 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 very similar. In the tier list, these are all terrible for weight loss. Probably OJ is the healthier, so we can say it's the winner from the, the health perspective. But since the tier list is to see what's the worst, between chips and cookies, I mean, there is a choice between high sugar, the high sugar, trans fat, and high sodium. So this is the choice you have here. Would you like to be kicked in the nuts by Cristiano Ronaldo? Or would you like to be punched in the face by Mike Tyson? So... I don't know, like barely probably chips are worse, but between chips and cookies, we are really, really, really doing really, really badly. So let me tell you something nice to close the video. What are the parameters to feeling full? One, overall your calories intake, if your calories intake is above a certain limit, you're going to feel fuller. Two, have high proteins in the diet with high levels of lysine. They're going to trigger the release of leptin. You're going to feel full. Next, the highest amount of fiber, you're going to like fill up your stomach and you're going to feel much fuller, plus the higher level of the food volume. So something like... Um, like soup, like uh, it's going to fill up your stomach more, you're going to release more of the hormone called CCK, you're going to feel full for longer.
So when you do this, you add good hydration, good calcium, good potassium, you will feel amazing and obviously avoid the foods that I told you today like the plague because they're really terrible for you. So you can watch here the next video, the next tier list, or you can subscribe to my channel right here. And more importantly, please let me know down below what tier list you would like to see next and leave a like if you enjoy this type of content. I will see you in the next video. For now, have a great day and bye bye.